Greetings. Welcome to Create Your Own Game Assets in Adobe Animate. In this video, you'll learn the fundamentals of drawing in Animate, which is formerly called Flash. Now, if you hear me refer to Flash in this video, my apologies. I'm a Flash user from way back in the day, and old habits are hard to break. So what you'll need to follow along with this video is the latest version of Adobe Animate. At the time of this recording, that's Adobe Animate CC 2017. So with the logistics out of the way, let's get to it. First things first, launch Adobe Animate. Then start by creating a new file. I generally select the HTML5 canvas and I set my width and height accordingly. For this asset, which will be a simple box or crate, I'll set the width to 2048 and the height to 2048. Then I'll verify the ruler units are set to pixels and click OK. Now we have a blank canvas. This is usually the most intimidating part of the process. But don't worry, it won't stay blank for too long. If you're already familiar with Adobe products, the interfaces between their apps are pretty similar. In this case, I have my workspace set for small screen and I've not done any customizations. On the left hand side is my tools panel and on the right hand side, I have access to additional panels like color, properties and library. Before we take a look at the tools and start drawing, let me show you what we'll be making. Here's a quick box I created just before recording this video. We'll be making a similar one in this tutorial. Okay, so back over to our blank canvas. Let's start by drawing a simple box on the stage. Select the rectangle tool from the tools panel. Then head over to the Properties panel and set the Stroke options. You'll set the color for black and the height to 20. Now set the fill color to be a dark brown. With the options set, it's time to draw the object. Do this by left clicking on the stage and dragging the shape until you create one that you like. When you have it just the way you want it, release the mouse button. So it looks like 20 for the stroke might be too large. To adjust this after the fact, you can select the entire object using the selection tool and double clicking on the fill area. If you just want to select the line, you can double click on the line. Of course, we want to select the entire object because if we want to change the color while we're changing the stroke, we can do that in one fell swoop in the properties. So I'm going to take that stroke down to 10 and I'm actually going to lighten up the fill just a little bit. Perfect. I'm happy with that. Now, one thing I want to do when I'm working on assets is keep my layers separate, organized and named. So let's rename this first layer to base. Do this by double clicking the layer name in the timeline, typing in the new name and then hitting the enter key. While I'm down here in the timeline, I'm going to add a new layer so we can start adding more parts to this box. Click the new layer button and rename it to horizontal boards. On this layer, I'm going to add the top and bottom boards. Once again, grab the rectangle tool, set the properties, and this time let's use a lighter brown for the fill. We'll draw the first board up top. For these boards, I want to have tiny little rivets in the corners. So to do that, I'll use the oval tool. Head over to the tools panel, select the oval tool, and then just like before, let's set the properties. For the rivets, I want to make the stroke a bit thinner and the color a slightly different shade of brown. Now I can draw that out onto the stage. Now that we have this little rivet, let's go ahead and duplicate it and then drag it across to the other side of the board. When you double click the rivet to select it, notice that it only selects the rivet and not the board. That's because the rivet shape is on top of the board shape. And it's also separated not only by stroke, but also by color. If I remove the line and set the fill to the same color as the board, it essentially becomes a single filled shape. 
If I remove the line and leave the color, it remains two separate shapes, but they can interact. Meaning, if I select the rivet and delete it, it also deletes the shape directly underneath it. This is true regardless of whether or not the shape has a stroke. This is one of the reasons why I tend to use a lot of layers when I'm creating assets. Okay, let's back up and get our rivet looking the way that it's supposed to. Now select the whole thing and copy it. You can use the Command C on a Mac to copy it. And now that it's copied to the clipboard, go ahead and paste it. You can either paste it in the center or paste it in place. Once the second copy is on the stage, drag it over to the other corner. To create the bottom board, the easiest thing to do is select the entire top board by double clicking on the board, not the rivets, and then copying and pasting it. Once it's pasted to the stage, go ahead and move it down to where it belongs, near the bottom. I'm just going to grab everything real quick and center it on the stage. And I'm just using the selection tool to grab it all and then I'm just dragging it to where I want it on the stage. It's time to move on to drawing the center of this box, which of course calls for a new layer. I'm going to name this new layer Vertical Boards. The vertical boards are just going to be a series of evenly spaced rectangles. So go ahead and create the first vertical board using the rectangle tool, and then copy and paste the shape a few times across the box. Don't forget to check the properties to make sure nothing's changed. If you notice these shapes are above the horizontal boards, adjust your layers by dragging the vertical boards layer below the horizontal boards layer. Perfect. Now it's time to create the cross-section boards, which you guessed it, that goes on another layer too. On that layer, you'll draw another rectangle. Once you have it on the stage, select it and then use the transform tool to rotate it into position. If at any time you're having issues selecting things, make sure you've got the selection tool selected. That's the one up here at the top. With the board selected, switch to the free transform tool. Then position your mouse in the top right corner. It'll turn into this little rotation looking thing. Then holding down the left mouse button, rotate the board into position. You could also move it around and resize it if you'd like. Now you'll notice that when you go to resize it, some wonky things can happen. If you're trying to resize it and keep the aspect ratio, hold down the shift key and adjust it from the corners. If you want to resize the top or sides, but only one top or one side, hold down the Alt or the Option key. Otherwise, it'll resize both sides simultaneously. So now you kind of have it in position, but it's overlapping the vertical bars on the side. There are a number of ways you can handle this, including adding new layers, but for something simple like this, it might be easier to just trim the shape. Do this by locking all of the other layers and then unlocking just this one. Now with the cross board one layer selected, switch to the selection tool, make your selection and hit the delete key. This removes the unwanted areas from the shape. You'll need to do this for both sides. With the shape looking good, let's duplicate the layer. Right click on the cross board one layer and select duplicate layers. Rename the new copy to Crossboard 2. Then select the shape on this layer and transform it so it creates an X across the box. Also, make sure to trim the sides. You can zoom in and out to check on things. And if you don't like what you did, back out and try again. In this case, it turns out that it's easier to create, copy, and then click the drawing. So don't be afraid to experiment. Okay, now it's time to add a little character to this box. Let's start by unlocking all of the layers. Firstly, let's warp the shapes a bit. You can do this by left clicking and dragging the shape around. Think of it like you're molding clay. When the pointer is rounded, it'll round out the shape. If you see the corner tool, it'll push and pull the corners. If you want another point or corner added, press the Alt or Option key where you want that point to appear. If you need to remove a point, switch to the Sub Selection tool, make your selection, click on the point you want to delete, and hit the Delete key. I'm going to adjust a few of these lines. I'm also going to reposition the rivets a bit. 
Now you can see when I did that, it punched a few holes in my drawing. I can use the paint bucket tool to fix this. If you did the same thing, just make sure you're on the right layer before using that paint bucket tool. So I'm going to speed things up a bit here and mess around with some of my lines. And uh, when I get it looking the way that I kind of want it, I'll come back. All right, so that's looking pretty good, but I think I want to give it more of an ink kind of feel. There are a few ways you can do this. You can modify the width property of the lines, which can give you an interesting look, almost like, a, like an ink stroke. Or you can convert the line to a fill. To do the latter, select the shape, then select Modify, Shape, Convert Lines to Fill from the menu items. This will convert the line to a fill, and then you can manipulate it as you would any other fill shape. The downside of this method is that it's no longer a line, which can make modifications a bit tricky. The upside, however, is you can really make this shape look wicked cool if you wanted to. Check it out. So we've got the box. It's looking pretty good, but it's also kind of looking a little flat. If we just add a few lights and shadows, that'll help that box pop a little bit. Create a new layer above the horizontal boards and name it Highlights. Now, add a rectangle with no stroke and a lighter shade of brown. Place it over the top board. Now you can set the opacity in different ways. You can set it by setting the alpha channel in the color panel, or by setting the layer's visibility option. In this case, I'm going to use the layer's visibility option. Now I want to add some shadows for the cross boards. I'll do this on a new layer, and I'll also use a darker color. I'll split this out for each crossboard, and this will let me add a drop shadow over the other crossboard. And I think I'll add one more underneath the top board. I might even add another highlight on this top crossboard as well. So the last thing I want to do is add a few marks to the box. For that, I'll create one more layer and using the line tool, I'll add some random marks. Then I'll select these lines and apply a width style. I'm holding the shift key down to select multiple objects. And I'll just go over here and grab a random style. I think it needs one more shadow. So let me fix this up here and get these shadows added and clean it up a little bit more. All right, so now we're done. We have a basic box. At this point, you're ready to export the file. And typically what you'll want to do is export it as a PNG so that it will save any of the alpha channel information, specifically the transparent background. And that's it. You've got yourself a box that you can use in your projects on the web or wherever else you need a PNG of a box. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And be sure to check out our other tutorials and content on the site at daytheindie.com. And remember folks, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Cheers.